Okay, so we're on. Another one this week where it's going to be a bit more visual than audio. So forgive me. Um, I know I keep doing this to you, um, but it's a fantastic way for us to articulate the nuances of the product of, of, of what we do, how we do it. And and I was that pleased really with, with the overview with the leather stuff that we did a few weeks back. I thought he was right and, uh, for us to, to dig into that on the fabric side of the house. So this week, we're going to start looking at um, fabric straps, what we do, why we do it the way we do. Um, I give you a bit of a breakdown of the differences between each product. It's something that we get messaged uh, fairly often, actually, uh, across the social media platforms and email, et cetera. Where guys get in touch and say, well, you know, what is the difference between an RAF and a full OTAN? What's the difference between an OTAN and a single pass? So hopefully this gives you a bit of an overview um, over the range of products that we have uh, within the fabric side of the house. Um, and and again, it gives you a bit more of a visual representation of what we're looking at and, and particularly, you know, the differences between these pieces. So... Where do we start? I think I think it's right and just um, to start where we started as a business. So our first ever design was the ZA, what we call now the ZA. The ZA is a single pass wash strap available in a multitude of colors and widths, um, but it's all based on resistance. So it's a resistance-based watch strap. There are no holes, there are no fastenings, there's only adjusters. So I'll take you through how this works. This is your keeper. This is used for tucking away your excess material. Essentially, you have the sliding bar and two D-rings. Goes behind the bar, goes in front of the bar, and gets pulled through. And that, in essence, is what's going to give you an absolute steadfast, rock solid cinch down um, on, on your watch. So essentially, once that's tucked in and pulled through, that adjuster locks into place. Um, and depending on your wrist size or depending on how you want to wear this, um, you then go through the keeper. You tuck that in. And what I always recommend folks do with this particular piece is fold it back in on itself to tuck the excess away and then slide it up. And that, in essence, is the ZA. Very simple in its design. Um, it was simple for a reason. Uh, when I started doing this, this was a hobby. It was never intended to become a business. Uh, and I wanted to make something just for me. I didn't have the complex tooling and the capabilities that we now have within, within the business. Um, so I needed to come up with a design, with something that I could basically do uh, with a limited kit and equipment and knowledge that I had. Uh, fundamentally, this has evolved a lot since the since the very early versions. Um, our finishing on it has evolved massively. The materials in which we use have evolved massively. Um, and, and and now it really is kind of, of exactly where it needs to be. It's interesting, when you go through design on products and when you start innovating and, and coming up with new ideas, you typically come up with a very raw piece of a very raw product at first. Um, and then you've got the opportunity to refine that and improve it in, 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 if you start looking at it in percentages, in, in, in great percentages. So, you know, you could improve the fabric. It's going to be a 20% when you could improve the, the, the quality or the, um, material use for the hardware. That's going to be another 20% when after a period of time of refinement, you get into a situation where, realistically you've only got one or two percent then do you know what i mean okay well you know the stitching's nailed down we've got that box stitch we don't use cotton on on the stitching um we use bonded polyester and we use that for a reason simply put it's it's far more abrasion resistant it's faster drying and it's got a higher tensile strength um but after you've gone through every single piece um of this particular product um you end up after what was a number of years with this this thing um, with what more or less is the finished article here now. Could this be improved? There's always room for improvement. I'm not arrogant. Um, I understand that, that, you know, nothing is absolutely perfect, but I think the biggest wins are going to come across from this strap now moving forward are going to be technological advances in materials um, or how things are put together. I think the design is pretty much exactly where it needs to be. We've literally got tens of thousands of these out in the world um, in some of the most 
arduous and austere environments known to man uh, and they stand up and they continue to stand up this one is kind of fun it's in it's in the multicam the official multicam i should add quite an interesting story on that um we wrote in uh shot show in las vegas a few years ago and it's a big big show typically geared up to the defense industry um personal protection etc um but there's also an awful lot of uh tactical um manufacturers out there a good friend of ours are the guys over at Spiritus and they introduced us to the multicam team. Um, and, and it was something we wanted to get involved in for a long time, but we wanted to do it um, where it was true to, to us a little bit. Multicam make webbing and you can just go and buy it. Uh, you have to buy it in large quantities if you want it off them. And they typically only do it in sizes that are extremely popular uh, for us in the watch industry. 20s, 22s. Um, it's not as popular, um, you know, in the global market uh, across other industries. Um, it's pretty much predominantly only the watch game. So what we petitioned them to do, and they were gracious enough to allow us to do it, was make our own webbing in Britain and then ship that over to the US uh, where the guys there would take it through its transformation into official multicam. Uh, so we went down that route with those guys. Um, that now is an official multicam product. Um, it's been um, touched and, and, and worked by the multicam guys in the continental US and then sent back to us. To my knowledge, um, we are the only strap company um, who are using proprietary webbing um, that have had multicam um, sign off and work with us uh, on turning our stuff into what was now official multicam stuff. So that's a bit of a feather in the cap for us. But that's the ZA uh, in an overview. Uh, we do this in a range of sizes and a range of colors. Um, this can fit anything from a 20 to a 26 mil watch. Uh, depending on which size you pick up, um, host of different colors. Uh, because we make these in-house as well, we can also make them a little longer or a little shorter, depending on what you want and your wrist size. Typically speaking, this as it comes is good for most. If we were to sell a thousand of these, I would expect two people, maybe three, to request a size adjustment. Uh, so if you are thinking about picking one of these up, unless there's a, a blatantly obvious uh, difference in 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 uh, in your wrist size, um, stir the shaft should cover you off just fine. Um, so that's a Z8. Um, yeah, that's it. And all the all the glory. Uh, I absolutely love this simply because it was the first. These are all like my children, uh, and they've all gone through multiple iterations as time goes on. So what we're going to do with that? I'm going to set that aside now. Being that we've started on the Z8, I think what it would make sense to do at this point is move over to this extra long Z8 here. Um, which to a lot of you, I think visually is probably a little confusing at this point. Like why, why does it need to be that big? Well, this is something that we developed for Garmin straps. Now, if you're running a Garmin watch, um, typically speaking, you like to have all of the functionality that you can gain, um, out of the Garmin piece. A lot of the times that includes the heart rate uh, monitor. So how do we get a single pass watch strap or any watch strap in that sense um, to work with a heart rate monitor on a Garmin watch uh, when your skin has to be in contact with the back of the watch for it to work? So we took the ZA, uh, which we've just chatted through, and we figured out that if we make this slightly longer, there's a way of putting this together where we can loop through the bars on the Garmin, you can have the underside on your wrist, but it keeps this top side uh, in contact um, with the watch at all times. So the top side of your wrist in contact with the watch at all times, which again, allows you to have uh, that, that functionality. So this is a really simple solution um, to what was posed to us at the time to be quite a technical problem. Um, and it was just fairly obvious when we looked at it and we, we you know, we took it apart. The The mechanism works in exactly the same way as the ZE does. Uh, it's just a little bit longer so you can double loop it. Um, keep it works in the same way. That would tuck in there with your XS. So that would work out. I know this is a little difficult to see on a camera, guys, so bear with me. But that would work out in such a way where that's linked into the watch there. Um, and you're away to go. So that's a really simple solution to a fairly technical problem um, that we spent hours and hours and probably days and weeks trying to figure out until the penny dropped. And we were just like, ah, 
well, let's just make an extra long ZD. That makes sense. Um, so that's the Garmin range. At the minute, uh, we do that in two colors on 26 mil, um, simply because it's not a massive seller for us. And whenever we make webbing, we have to make an awful lot of it. Um, we're going to be putting a video together soon, uh, talking about the production of the webbing. Uh, so bear with us on that. But that that video, when it comes, should give you a bit of an insight, really, uh, into just how much we need to make when we need to make uh, you know a custom piece. So at the minute, that's available in two colours um, across three different widths. Some garments are smaller, some are larger. So we do this in twenty. 22, uh, 26. We've also got some limited uh, in 24 and 25 that we've used uh, or put together webbing for uh, trying to get the sizing right. So if you do have an awkward uh, size watch, um, drop us an email or, or drop us a message and we may just have some webbing there in 24 and 25 if you need it. So that's the Garmin taken care of, tickly boo, that's that done. Uh, the next obvious uh, member of that family is the Apple Watch. Again, you see our proprietary design, double D-ring, sliding bar buckles, and sewn in Apple Watch connectors. Um, these are uh, super simple uh, to pop into the watch. Um, simply put, that just slides in. If you've got an Apple Watch, you already know how that works. That's a, that's a fairly obvious thing for, for Apple customers. Uh, but again, we've taken the same design language and the same family of product um, from the ZA and from the Garmin piece, um, and we've made it that way. Um, so it, it is a ZA buckled uh, Apple strap. Uh, again, the way that works, that allows you to have your heart rate functionality. Uh, everything's in one place there. Um, and it's it's just a, a, a neat little thing. Some of the drivers behind these and some of the drivers behind the style and the length and and and, and why we make the things the way we do with these particular products is simply because a lot of our customers are first responders, military, um, or guys out hands-on with a physicality to their job or, or their role. Um, and these guys want infinite adjustability. The adjustability you get off this um, is fantastic. It allows you to get the perfect fit every time same as it does with the Garmin and the ZA, uh, but it also allows you to size up and size down if you need to. For example, uh, if you were a diver uh, operating in uh, the North Sea, it's an exceptionally cold environment, um, and you would be wearing a dry suit. On that dry suit, perhaps you don't want to you know, have to mess around with watch straps, adjusting stuff, this, that, and the other. With a product like this, it's very easily adjustable over the top of a dry suit or a, uh, a flight suit or uh, any sort of overalls or coveralls that you may want or need. Um, this, this allows you that adjustability on the go without faffing around with tangs and buckles. You can even operate it gloved, uh, which is fantastic. But that'll give you a bit of an insight into that family of products. Now, where does that lead us on to? So essentially now what we've got is three pieces that make up the OTAN range. Um, to a lot of people, they look very, very similar. Um, there are some key differences and a lot of this harps back to the historical element um, or the historical influences that have impacted these designs over the last 50 or 60 years. So before we get stuck in there, um, there is a lot of history here. There is a lot of influence um, from from what has been popular uh, within the British Armed Forces um, and that is the way for most of the industry. So where do we begin? I think if we start with the natural outlier, which is the RAF, so we'll slide those over a little. This is called the RAF for a reason. Um, it's exceptionally popular or was made popular uh, by the RAF, the Royal Air Force. Um, what they wanted was a single pass strap that was easily operated, towed and stuck away in a keeper that is exactly the same fabric as the strap is made out of. Colloqu colloquially, colloquially, how do we say that? You know what I mean. It is known as the RAF strap simply because it was popular with that community. It was popular within within within, within that organization. It's a very, very, very neat, simple um, design. 
Um, it's fantastic. It's timeless, uh, to my knowledge. These started popping up around about the 40s or the 50s. Um, and, and this has become a staple, really, of, of the watch scene for a long time. I love the single pass. The reason why I love the single pass is you, you don't have this extra bit on the underside. Now, I understand a lot of you purists out there will absolutely adore that, and that's fine. The beauty of watches, guys, and, and, and this hobby of ours is it's everything comes down to personal preference. And just because um, I prefer something more than something else doesn't mean um, I can't appreciate it for what it is. This is a fantastic piece. Um, it's made uh, in the UK. We do it all in in, in Liverpool. Uh, fabrics woven over in Manchester. It comes over to us and then we turn it into these fabulous pieces uh, that you see. This particular uh, piece of fabric is the Connery uh, Stylely, made famous by Sean Connery in the Bond films. Um, he wore a strap very, very similar to this um, in these colours. Very famously, uh, I think he wore an 18 mil on a 20 mil watch. He was on his Rolex uh, Submariner, and that has become synonymous, really, with with Connery and 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 James Bond ever since. Um, the RAF is a classic design. It's fairly timeless in its approach, um, and we've done it and executed it um, in our own style. Um, we've got our length, which we've determined. We've got the fabric, which is an in-house uh, in house weave, essentially. Um, but we've knocked it together with some bar tacks uh, at the top and the bottom on the keeper. Um, that just allows everything to be locked into place. Uh, it stays exactly where it's supposed to. Some folks make these where the keepers float. Um, it's not something that we do, um, but it, you know, if, if, if that's your styley, then you'd be able to go out and find it if uh, if you look hard enough. But that, in its essence, is is the RAF. We use the OTAN buckle, which again is our proprietary buckle. Um, rather than having or using spring bars uh, in in these these pieces of hardware, we have the male and female screws. They lock in, uh, just tighten up, and that keeps everything in place. One of the biggest bugbears for me. Um, when I was designing watch straps was the whole purpose of NATOs or single passes or, or whatever it may be is to add a level of security to your watch. Simply put, if a spring bar fails on, on your watch uh, and you're wearing a two-piece strap, the watch will fall to the floor. On a one-piece, it will hang on by day of life by the other spring bar. Everyone who's ever designed watch straps has, has said, right, you know, this is a fantastic idea. You know, let's, let's move forward with this design. And then they've put a spring bar in, 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 in where the hardware is. And it just baffled me. It made no sense. So when we came at it, I thought, well, you know, let's use screws. It makes a bit, bit more sense to do that when mitigating any uh, potential failure points in, in, in the strap. So, so that was the decision process there, but in its essence, that's the RAF again, uh, available in a range of colors and sizes. Um, uh, but, but there she is in all the glory. We'll move her over now to the, to the side. And now we'll talk about the next purists, uh, version of the strap, which is a full OTAN. Notice we call our products OTANs. There is a reason for that. Um, there are other companies who operate globally who have certain IP and trademarks over wording when it comes to things like this. Um, so to protect ourselves, to protect our business, um, we, we, we choose to call our products something slightly different. Um, this essentially is a variation or our interpretation of what is known globally as the G10 strap. The G10 strap is a military watch strap made famous by the British Armed Forces, more or less around the 50s. We'll dig into the history of, of stuff in far more depth on another episode. Um, but in its form, as we see it today, roughly speaking, um, this design came up around that period. I've got evidence that I'll take it back to the late 1880s and 90s, um, but we'll touch on that in a future uh, a future episode. But essentially, this is the standard, um, and a lot of people refer to a DEF stand or the defense standard, um, which was set out by the MOD uh, in its design. Ours is not and does not meet, or we do not supply the MOD with these watch straps. I just want to clarify that now. This is our interpretation of a classic design that has been supplied to the MOD for a number of years. So let's start digging into this. 
So we would refer to this as a two-piece. The reason why we would refer to it as a two-piece is because it's made up of two pieces of fabric. It's actually one piece, an extra long piece of fabric that doubles back on itself. But if we open that up, you'll understand why it's referred to as a two-piece. We have this underside. Now, how this works, or how it's designed to work, is the watch is slid on and up uh, from the 12 o'clock position. It will feed into the watch, and then that goes back down and around there. A lot of people ask what this underside is for. And simply put, the underside basically is in case you want to adjust the sizing of the strap on the fly or on the move, and you can do it that way. Why they decided to do it with a two-piece, I have no idea. Um, looking at the historical influences that I've seen around the inception or, or the grandparents, essentially, of the G10, I think it's more or less because that's the way it was always done and, and, and it just carried over. It was just a piece of design language it carried over. For me, the underside has always made no sense. I find it a nuisance. We end up with two pieces of fabric in between me and the watch. I kind of don't like that. I like a lower profile uh, on my wrist. But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of you out there who absolutely love this design. And I get it. Uh, it's classic. Uh, it is what it is. Um, and it's, it's, it's unapologetic about it. This is essentially um, the, the, the Toyota of watch straps, should we say. Um, this is the, the, you know, the, the workhorse uh, when it comes into the watch strap side of stuff. So we've put our own flair on it. What have we done? So essentially, we've got our hardware set up um, in place. Um, all the benefits and perks that we've just talked about with with the other pieces that we, we've been through on, both on this video and uh, on the leather stuff. Uh, we've got our metal keepers there as well. Um, with our stitching, we really over-engineer this. Um, to an inch of its life, uh, in all honesty. A lot of folks out there will um, heat weld, and that's fine. Again, a lot of this guy's his personal preference. For me, um, I just like security uh, and having the ability where I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about my watch. Let's put it this way. I, I didn't grow up um, with, with an abundance of money. So when I came into the working world, um, whatever I bought, I wanted to look after and look, wanted to keep, so I couldn't afford to bloody replace it. Um, so if I was making something, then I wanted, you know, almost, I wanted to spot weld it to my, to my wrist, make sure that I can't go anywhere. Because uh, if I lost it, I lost it. That was it. Um, so we've got bar tacking um, at 12 and 6, uh, and our box stitch bang on in the middle. That box stitch is now being used widely amongst the industry, uh, and it's great to see. Um, I think we were one of the first, if not the first, to put it on a traditional style strap like this. This, this in essence, guys, is a purist version of this strap. Uh, this is what you would expect to find or a variation of what you would expect to find if you went to stores uh, and you actually were able to get a, a watch strap out of out of uh, British Armed Forces stores. Uh, but what we must remember is stores are for storing, not issuing. It's kind of like fishing. They call it fishing and not catching um, because there's no guarantee you're going to catch. Um, you fish. Uh, stores are the same. Stores are for storing. Um, so if you've been lucky enough in your career to uh, to acquire some of these from uh, from what is now His Majesty's Armed Forces, and treasure them uh, because they're special. Um, for us, we try and make that methodology, that design, that style accessible to, uh, to to the rest of the world. And this is what the the full OTAN or the OTAN on our website is. It's our interpretation of the G10. Um, I'll set that aside. Moving on, now we have what I favour more than anything is the single pass. Essentially, it's exactly the same strap. Um, the only difference is we cut off that underside. For me, it's not required. It doesn't make sense. I don't like it. I've already got wrists like a silver back. I do not need more bulk on my watches. Um, some guys love it. I get it. For me, it just, this is my favorite. This is, this is how I like it to be. Um, for visual representation there, I'll just dip into this a bit. This is the tail that we're referring to earlier. This is it without it. That's basically it. So we've got a, an OTAN and a single pass. 
That is the only difference. The number of holes, the placement, the length, the fabric, the, the construction, the hardware is identical. The only difference is we cut that off on the single pass um, because it makes sense. Um, what I did notice a number of years ago was a lot of folks would buy those because you could only get you know, a full, a full OTAN, uh, not just off us, but off anywhere in the world. Um, and everyone had always cut those off anyway. So what's the point? why have it um if you need it if it makes sense to you if that's what you want by all means you have the option to have that um for the rest of us single pass single pass single pass um that is my favorite that's 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 this is how i roll um you'll see the design language here carries over from the leather products that we have more or less exactly the same design um uh, we've changed up the stitching to accommodate leather on the leather stuff this is uh, polyester. Now, I've referenced polyester a few times, and I'm sure some of you in this video have gone, ooh, polyester. There's polyester and there's polyester. The vast majority of the industry make these straps out of nylon, and they're referred to as nylon straps. Uh, we chose not to go down that route um, for a number of reasons. Uh, having first-hand experience, um, growing up in Wales, which is essentially the mountains and the sea, um, working in uh, the British Armed Forces for a period of time, um, and also being fairly outdoorsy um, with uh, more or less a lifetime spent uh, fishing and hunting, um, I quickly figured out that I wanted something uh, that was exceptionally abrasion resistant and very fast drying um, on my wrist. That's that's the way I want to go down with it. Polyester, good polyester, woven correctly in the right way, will deliver all of these properties uh, in a superior format uh, than nylon would. So the decision was made. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. We're going to do it the way we would want it to be done or the way I would want it to be done. Um, and that is with polyester. So this is a bonded polyester um, that is made in the UK, again, to our, our specifications. We've got our own weft and warp. I'm not going to tell you what that is because that's, that's like Colonel Sanders giving you the secret recipe. I'm not about to do that. However, if you look across all of our products, you'll see the same weave pattern across absolutely everything. This is what distinctly make our products our products. Um, it's a little hidden gem, fairly obvious to a lot of people. Some people have got 15, 20 straps. They've never realized that. They've never looked at it. Um, it's an Easter egg if, if you're unaware of it, but essentially it's our own style um, of, of fabric. The abrasion resistance uh, works exceptionally well for the arduous environments these straps were designed for and they find themselves in with our customer base. Um, we need the abrasion resistance. That's, that's just a fundamental part of, of the piece. We need um, it to be fast drying. Um, there's nothing worse than, than you know, um, soaking wet and and your watch strap is, is stinking. The, the longer it stays stays wet, it starts developing that funk and, and everything else. No one likes that. Um, so yeah, far more abrasion resistant. It's got a higher tensile strength um, and it is faster drying. So that's why we've gone down the path we have. So this is the single pass. This color uh, is the Admiralty Gray. Um, all the things I've shown you today are available in different colors and sizes. I've just pulled out a selection um, of what we've got in the workshop ready to go so I can come in and, uh, and record this video up and give you a bit of an insight. So this is the OTAN single pass in Admiralty Grey available in 20 and 22 mil. Um, we may open that up to 18 soon enough. If you do want 18, it's something that we're considering. So comment in the comments box below with a comment. And uh, we'll get to that. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Um, if there's a desire for that, we can do it. This is the full OTAN. Exactly the same strap, but with the extra bit on the underside. Um, this is the RAF. Again, same family of products. Um, but instead of using metal retaining rings or keepers, we have a fabric one. Um, but aside from that, more or less, uh, the same style of strap and it belongs to the same family of products. Recap again on the ZA, where it all started. Um, infinitely adjustable. Uh, this is our entry level piece. Um, this is what gets you into the brand and it's going to last forever. It really is. These are fantastic pieces and we've got guys up there now who are on their fifth or sixth year of ownership with this uh, and they do some very physical demanding jobs uh, and the thing's still going strong. All you need to do is clean it. We've got the Garmin. 
the extra long version of the ZE, um, simply for your smartwatch needs, which will allow you to utilize and capitalize on the heart rate functionality uh, that, that you require out of a smartwatch. And then we have the Apple. Again, but the same family of products as the ZE, um, but pre-built in with the Apple connectors, uh, just to ensure, again, you've got that functionality and that capability of using your heart rate uh, monitors where you need them. Now, that's the watch strap side of stuff. Um, we do make little bits um, from time to time that, that end up becoming staples uh, of, of our product range. And one of these little pieces or little bits is the blood tag. Now, it makes a lot of sense to a lot of our customers to have this visually on display um, on their watch at all times. As I mentioned earlier, we came up and the business started um, basically through, through operating for and within the uh, first responder and military scene. Um, that's, that's who this was designed for in its essence. Um, and these guys, for obvious reasons, it makes a lot of sense to have some indications to their blood type uh, on their wrist should they need it. So this is an example of the A positive. We run them in every single uh, blood type known to man um, in 20 mil and 22 mil. We've had a number of people over the years who have asked us to make these in black with steel, um, you know, colored in. I don't, I won't. And the reason for that is this isn't um, furniture. This is functional. And the whole purpose of this is for it to be clear, legible, and easy to read, and also fairly obvious. Um, God forbid, should you ever need someone to read it uh, to help you out in a medical situation. Um, so these are available on our site as well. Again, in 20 and 22, uh, and they are designed to work uh, with the fabric straps. Uh, I wouldn't recommend dragging these over leather probably a bad idea. You're going to scratch the leather to bits um, and, and theoretically ruin the strap. Um, but, you know, some people some people do what they want and, 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 and they can do that. But for me, the fabric is the way forward on this particular piece. Um, it's a great little addition um, and, and typically it just sits underneath the watch at six o'clock and it's fairly obvious. Should you ever need it, God forbid you do, um, a first responder comes out and checks you, one of the first things they're gonna do is go to your wrist and, and, and check your pulse or check your heart rate uh, from that. Um, and there it is, it's glaring at them, it's fairly obvious. Um, so it's a great little, great little add-on uh, if you're looking at that. So essentially guys, that's a bit of an overview or a complete overview of the fabric products that we do. We are, and I mentioned this earlier on in the video, going to start showing you more on the production of how we make these and how we weave the web and how we put it all together, how it becomes what it is in, in, in front of me now. Um, so bear with us on that. For now, what I wanted to do is give you a baseline level, a baseline understanding um, of what we make, what the, what the style differences are, uh, what the capabilities are of each product and each piece. Um, so we can start taking you on this journey now and introducing you to the manufacturing techniques, the processes, uh, and a little bit more behind the scenes when it comes to the weaving um, and, and the mill that we use. So uh, hopefully that's given you a bit of an overview, a bit of an over, uh, a bit of an insight really into the thought process and the design language uh, behind the product. Um, so until next time, thank you.